you know, to become Muslim, this is this is a, it's a step you can take, and it uh, and you can take your time. You don't have to know all the things after one week. You know, you can become Muslim. This is only the first the first step. You know, you become Muslim if you believe there's only one God, uh, and Muhammad was his uh, was his messenger. You know, then you're already Muslim, and then you take step by step the further things. Uh, and you don't have to go out there and say, no, I'm Muslim. You don't have to. It's something between you and God, you know, in the in the first way. That's the way I did it. You know? <coughs> and then, step by step, you uh, you learn the things and uh, you read it up by your own and you take it step by step. That's, um, that's the way I did it. And it worked out very good. After 30 years, uh, I, I being Muslim, Already, sister, I can tell you this was the best decision in my life. So you finna have to repeat that, right? Mm -hmm. Ashhadu. 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 Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasulu. Wa rasulu. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship. That there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Besides Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him. That Muhammad, please be upon him. Peace be upon him is the messenger of Allah. Is the messenger of Allah. So, mashallah, Brother Harun, you were uh, sharing with me the story that uh, you have converted or reverted to Islam when you were 24 years of age. Yes. Welcome to Islam, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't consider you as a convert or a revert, but just as a Muslim. Yes. Right? That's the first and the foremost label Allah has given to, to all the Muslims. So, now the questions the viewers may be asking would be the question, okay, an intelligent person like you, born and raised in Europe, in Germany, of all the faiths around the world, people are considering, you know, secularism, atheism, agnosticism. Why did you choose Islam? What would you say? <laughs> yeah, I was raised and born in a, in a German and Catholic background. And um, my father's uh, sister, she was a nun. So um, I was taken always to church and... Um, uh, I got the whole program for, for Catholic people and I also had to, to read the, the Bible and uh, um, well, when you're young, you accept all this and uh, when you get older, then you start to ask questions and, um, um, and then you realize um, that, so, so it happened to me, I was like, hmm, there's something wrong here. So, um, I realized that uh, because I wrote up the Bible, the Bible there are there are contradictions inside. So I ask questions, and um, these questions never been answered. Like example of a contradiction or a doubt that she had about the yeah. Bible. Give me one example. Yeah, what, what, one example. For example, is uh, uh, Judah. Um, Judah uh, when he uh, the way he died. Mm. Yeah. Judas, right? Yeah, Judas. One of right? the twelve disciples. When he betrayed, then yeah. he died. Okay. Now the way he died, uh, one in uh, and one is, is mentioned that he, um, he 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 was buying a field and then he fall down and his inside gushed out, and somewhere else, <laughs> the, it's it's written that he throw the money away and he hang him up himself. Mm. So, so what is, what 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 is this? So I was like, hmm. I answered a question to a pastor. No, no answers. No answer. No answer. If Jesus is God, and we say God is all-knowing, how can it be that He don't know the time? Hmm. Oh, is that in the Bible? Yeah, it's in the Bible. It's written in the Bible that um, uh, nobody knows the time, even the angels, only God. And Jesus himself, he didn't know. So, one of the attributes of a God for me is that um, uh, God is all-knowing. So, well, for me, a clear contradiction <laughs> that... 
that uh, Jesus couldn't be God. Despite what the Christians believe, right? Yeah. So that passage that you mentioned, I always, when I have a friendly conversations with the Christians, I mention to them, okay, you have this wonderful, perfect attributes of God, and then let's examine Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Did he have the attributes of being all-knowing, being all-powerful? He does not. And the example that you gave, this is in the Gospel of Mark, the second Gospel, yes. chapter 13, verse number 32. People of Jesus, they came to him and they asked him this important question. Oh, tell us about the last day, when the last hour is going to come. And Jesus, as a messenger of Allah, right? Limited in knowledge, only Allah is all knowledgeable. Jesus, peace be upon him, he replied that of that day and of that hour, no one knows it. No human, no angel, neither the son, but only the father. So when he said the son, that's in, that's in a metaphorical way. That's what the Bible attributes. But the biggest point from this, uh, this passage is that Jesus is not all knowing. He does not know the future. Anyone no. who does not know the future is disqualified from being God. That's the way I thought it. And, uh, and also, um, a very important point is that um, um, if you follow a book, when you read it up by yourself and you show who has written it, you can just today, you can Google it up by your own. <laughs> the funny thing is, everywhere is written, the author is unknown. Of the so, Bible. Of the Bible, yes. The author is unknown. That's so... I said to myself, so, okay, if this book is not, uh, if the author is unknown, I rather don't follow any longer the scripture. So, I had to find something else who give me all these answers. When, when I read the Quran, um, um, for me, it was like, but, but, but everywhere, like, like an explosion in my brain, all the answers have, have been given to me. And the most, the most important thing who is in Christianity is there's really no answer. Is, is about what's going to happen after you die. MashaAllah. Mm. The concept of salvation. Yeah, the concept of salvation. And, uh, and, and this is something that's really amazing in the Quran. And in, this, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad yeah. alayhi wa sallam, peace be yeah. upon him. Uh, really, um, um, it explained exactly what happened, what the reward will happen, everything what will happen will happen to you, and uh, this made me feel like really, really good. And now, after being 30 years Muslim, Mashallah. Um, really, I, I really, I, I think it's 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 just it's it's amazing. Um, it took all away your fear and all away your, your, your I'm not I'm not long uh, not uh, afraid of what will happen mm -hmm. because there is a really there is a clearness. Mm -hmm. yeah. The process is there. The, the process it's not ambiguous. You know, I mean, it's yeah. all charted out. Before I was always like, oh, you you don't know what happened, and then and and and, and uh, you feel like uh, like really unsure because if you don't know what's happening in your life, uh, mm -hmm. it makes you feel uncomfortable. So, what was the reaction from your parents, from your siblings, from your family? Yeah, um, it's. I think with all the converts, the same problems is is the main problem is that we are afraid that what will our what will our uh, society around us, our family, what will they say? But um, for me, um, as I realized that. Uh, I will not leave my religion. I will just complete my religion. Um, I wasn't afraid at all. And this was also to, to my family was the explanation. I said, come on, what do you, what's the problem? I didn't leave the religion. Uh, I complete the religion and I explained what was the, what's, what is all about, about the, uh, the completing your religion. Mm -hmm. And so they really quite, uh, they, 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 they understood and uh, uh, they accepted it very well. Okay. I mean, accepted means that uh, they embraced or they are in the, hopefully you are sharing with them more. Yeah, of course. I was, okay. I, I was, I was, uh, I was sharing with himself. My mother, for example, she, she, she became, she came, became Muslim. Mashallah, yeah. congratulations! This is such yeah. a big news. Mashallah, yeah. right? Still, it feels so nice. Our parents, our mother, yeah. especially, 
You know, so there are so many non-Muslims out there who may have major misconceptions about Islam based upon what they see. Social media and Fox News and newspapers and radios and maybe it's actions of some not so practicing Muslims. So what advice would you give to those brothers and sisters of our, you know, people of other faiths that why they should look into Islam? What would you say? I would say um, you have to look on Islam because it's really the only religion who will answer your question. I promise you, if you leave your comfort zone and if you're looking into this religion, every single question will be answered. Yes. So um, you just have to make your own effort to go for it by your own. And, um, you can also you can also read it up by by, by your own, and um, my advice for everything who is who's out there, um, just give it a chance, try and go for it, and uh, you will be amazed that all the questions you have is really they will be answered. I promise. So Islam provides complete, comprehensive, beneficial solutions. But I think the best gift anyone can get once they embrace the faith of Islam, the faith of all the prophets and all the messengers, is the gift of paradise by Allah's mercy. Yes. Right? And now the Muslim brothers and sisters who are watching, uh, why we should uh, share the message of Islam with the people all around us? You said something really profound. Please tell us why we should share Islam with people all around us, our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues. Yeah, uh, we should share because the, the, the share this and the dawah is very, very important. Just imagine how many people are out there, brothers, who don't know the truth yet. And what will you say on the day of judgment when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the, know the knowledge we have? You cannot be there and saying, I knew it, but I didn't tell a single person, no. This is why it's so important. We have to share this message because what is more important than the truth? There is nothing more important than the truth. And we have to share this, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, right? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah 16, verse number 125, and the verse continues, this is from chapter 16 of the Quran, verse number 125, as a reminder to me and to all of us that our Creator Allah is commanding us that invite all to the way of Allah with wisdom and good preaching and converse with them in ways which are best and most gracious. So now the topic is, there are so many different ways people are sharing, is, which is good, people are sharing, right? Many, many dais yes. are sharing Islam. However, some of the people, they're having some shouting matches, right? Yes. Shouting matches and people are putting other people's faith down. They're abusing people and, they, you know, they're having actually physical fights in Dawa. Yes. What do you think is the right way based upon your knowledge? Yeah. Like I mentioned before, I was watching your your dawa, and I also watched uh, other dawas. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, when when they fight and they they really try to to say I'm right, you wrong, that's not our way, brothers and sisters. Um, we have to our knowledge. We have to show the people like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like peace be upon him, like he 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 did it always in a nice way. You have to talk to them friendly and you have to listen out where they are, where, where's their knowledge. And then you have to, co you have to go and to keep them from the point where they are. This is very, very important and to, and to guide them friendly. Uh, this is the, the most important things. We are not here to, to, put, uh, uh, to make somebody feel bad or, or we, we don't have to prove because well, brothers and sisters, we already, we know, we know the truth. So we don't have to push it and always have to show up that we are, that we are, we are right. This is really, it's not necessarily. That's an important point, brother Harun. May Allah bless you for bringing that up. See, dawah should never be, debate is not the default form of dawah. 
our frame of reference is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, he used to convey the message with compassion, with empathy, with a smile on his yeah. face, right? Concern for the people. And that's what brought people close to him. So people used to listen to him by his dynamic example. Uh, and also really important, we are not there to defeat people. Defeating them is so easy, by the way, but yeah. we are there to win their hearts and minds. Yeah. We are there to win their hearts and minds. It's easy to defeat because we have the truth. So yeah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when people used to approach him and abuse him verbally and physically, he just used to move away, convey the message and pray for them and then move away. One example that I can give, and you already know this, would be, when he went to the city of Taif, over there he conveyed the message, but he got a really backlash from the people. They started to pick up the stones and hit him, and that was the worst day of his life, the saddest day of his life. But the example is this. He did not turn around, picked up the stones and hit them back. He could have done that. He's a human being. He has emotions. He was angry. But then he prayed for them. He just moved away from the scene. And then we know that because of his demeanor, because of his example and the hikmah and the prayers, the whole city and their progeny, they all converted to Islam. That's the prophetic example. Not the shouting matches, not you know debates yeah. and defeating and putting people down. Love and compassion and concern and smile. That is the prophetic example. That's the example that is going to bring barakah and the blessings in our yes. field of dawah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And what book that you would recommend before we close? They may be thinking, okay, what happens next? What do I do? What book would you recommend them to read? The best book in the whole world. <laughs> the, back book, uh, the, the best book you can read, of course, is the Holy Quran. Um, because <laughs> there you find all the, the whole truth, there's everything is explained in this book. And um, my advice to you is just give it a try, um, read it up, and uh, if there are any questions, uh, just go to your local masjid, um, to the people with knowledge, and I promise you they will answer your questions. Yes, inshallah, right? And obviously, if anyone would like to get a free copy of the Quran, they can give us a call 1-800-662-ISLAM 1-800-662-ISLAM or you can go to the website gainpeace.com So again, may Allah you know, keep on blessing you with the wonderful efforts of Dawah, keep on encouraging other Muslims, keep on educating the non-Muslim brothers and sisters. So all of us, by Allah's mercy, inshallah, we can go to eternal paradise. Welcome to Islam. Jazakallah khair, brother Harun. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, brother. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.